Okay, welcome back everybody for the last session of today. Dinner awaits afterwards. <laughs> okay, so the first speaker of this session is uh, Mikhail Podratsky, and he will be uh, talking to us about incremental assurance for REST network stack. Take it away. Hello everybody, thanks for the introduction. Um, so first, to give credit where the credit is due, uh, this work was actually done by our intern, Tiago, who is working with us over summer. Unfortunately, he couldn't travel here, but uh, you know, if you have some specific questions, I can direct you to him. Uh, with that, I'll start with motivation. Uh, first, you know, there's multiple ways to go around this, and I'm actually excited to hear the next presentation. But based on our experience, uh, we determined that building a high assurance network stack from scratch is hard. And that's because there are you know, complex protocols that are you know, defined in various ways. Um, you know, the stack needs to be both fast and feature complete. That's what users you know, tend to want. And as a result, you often write your code in a performant way, not in a verification friendly way. And so then if you're trying to verify such code, you, know, you end up with a lot of difficulty uh, how to do that. So instead, and also because our uh, funding was rather limited, so we have a short timeline to, to uh, do our work, uh, we decided to improve on an existing code base. Basically saying, like, well, can we take a popular networking stack or a library and make it better? Uh, so obvious choices, you know, as you can, as you can imagine, um, you end up with either large code bases, which are not very amenable to any verification or assurance, or, as I mentioned, uh, those would be difficult to reason about, especially the embedded stacks written in C, uh, just because of the performance and feature completeness reasons. Um, so I'll follow on the theme of the day and I'll call Rust to the rescue. Um, there is, uh, fortunately, a network stack written in Rust that supports all the you know, major network protocols. It's called Small TCP, and it was designed for embedded systems. Um, it kind of checks all the boxes, as you can see. Uh, for an open source code, is unusually good code, so that was a good start. And it also, you know, has been used on SCL for uh, several times before, as I, you know, learned over the course of these few days. And uh, at Gala, we used it before with chem keys. So what we decided uh, for the incremental assurance, there are two approaches. Uh, first is using automated closed box learning and uh, subsequent analysis of models. And uh, the second one is about symbolic execution. So the first uh, uses tool called Prognosis. Highly recommend checking out that paper uh, hiding behind that link uh, for like in-depth description of the, of the framework. Uh, and we used Prognosis uh, for effective model-based verification of uh, TCP protocol of, uh, of the network stack. And then uh, some of you might be familiar with Scani Rust Verifier. verifier. Uh, it's a symbolic execution, uh, sorry, you, you test it, you're doing symbolic testing uh, for your Rust code. And with that, we were able to uh, verify the protocol logic and uh, packet format correctness and uh, get in both on those uh, in depth. So, Prognosis is uh, an automated closed box tool for protocol inference. How does this work is uh, it's based on automata learning and it has seen some industry use. Uh, the paper shows how it was used to learn about uh, a reason about a quick protocol, which is actually significantly more complex than TCP. Uh, we use it for TCP protocol specifically. And uh, to do that, um, this, is, this is an overview of a prognosis um, tool. So we have a system under learning, which uh, can be in general any system that responds to um, stimuli. So you send um, messages to the system and you observe it responses. Uh, there is analysis module that lets you analyze uh, the learned module of the system and maybe do some uh, you know, diff against another um, model of the system and some other tweaks. And uh, we also have the learning module uh, where is the core of the, of the tool. It is using a model learning algorithm and uh, the learning module is issuing queries to the system under learning. 
and based on the responses from the system under learning, it adapts its internal model of the system. Uh, the most important piece is the translation pair that uh, translates uh, the messages or you know, more abstractly alphabet the system understands to the level of abstraction you desire as a user. So let's say for this case, TCP protocol, we don't really want to be fiddling with bits and you know, reasoning about uh, what particular bit sequence makes sense. We are interested in you know, things like uh, acknowledge packet, uh, syn packet, and so on. And so this translation pair uh, lets us do the translation you know, both to higher abstraction and then to lower abstraction. Because again, the learning module is, needs to be able to, to query the system with essentially arbitrary sequence of inputs. And uh, important piece uh, that uh, I think differentiates this approach from some previous work is that the system under learning uh, uses, uh, sorry, we use a reference, so no, we use an implementation of sorts to give us this uh, translation between the abstract layer of the protocol and the actual you know, bit representation. So in this particular you know, example, uh, we used a Python implementation of TCP stack, but you can imagine you can use a different one. Um, so in a way, you're comparing one implementation that you reasonably sure is correct uh, with other implementations. And uh, this will become more clear in a second. So prognosis then learns the system as a, and represents as, as merely state machines. So uh, you can see on the left side, uh, we have client server uh, sequence of SYN and SYN ACK um, for, TC, for a new TCP connection. And on the right side, you see how this looks uh, as a resulting model of this interaction through prognosis. So um, the important piece is that, you know, some values that I'm not interested about or they're not important, you know, you have question marks, and so you're really abstracting the things you care about and you see the state transitions, right? So you have, you know, the zero states, state S1, state S2, and, uh, you know, you can replicate this on a larger, larger scale. Um, so TCP protocol, very exciting, defined, you know, first time, I believe in the 80s. The last is RFC 9293, um, again, the RFC, defines how the protocol should behave, but it's by no means a formal specification. It's, uh, you're all familiar with, with, with RFC, so it's, uh, you know, English description of, uh, you know, how things should happen. And it's uh, often an idealized view of, of the protocol rather than, you know, what happens in reality. On the right side, we see a, a state machine from that RFC that, you know, describes the protocol. And um, the interesting thing is, A, it's relatively complex. You know, we have 12 or so states with different, you know, transition guards. And um, you can, if you, if you look at it for long enough, you'll notice there are some things that might not exactly be, you know, easily to formalize, right? Like the, the, some of the transitions might have different guards and so on. So it's sort of like a best case, you know, ideal representation of the protocol. If you want to implement it, you get to things like, you know, timeouts and queuing and so on. So the procedural code end up to be very different. Um, well, so this is the Linux TCP state machine as uh, learned through prognosis tool. Um, if you squint at it from the right angle, you see it's basically similar to what you saw on the previous slide. Uh, just kind of go, you know, this, and then we go here. Um, we used uh, Linux uh, TCP state machine first because, um, you know, despite its all drawbacks, Linux uh, network stack is, you know, well matured, widely used. So we just assume, you know, it's representing the protocol relatively accurately. Um, I think the interesting thing to note is the complexity and um, I don't think we really need to go into the details about the individual states or state machines. Um, you know, S0 is the first state and then you kind of go to, um, depending on your inputs. Now, when we tried small TCP, which is the Rust network stack, you notice immediately that uh, the learned state machine is much simpler 
and the state, uh, states are collapsed. Uh, what this means is that uh, maybe the developers made certain choices that simplify uh, behavior, that perhaps the standard you know, required you to do something, but um, for sake of simplicity, or maybe for the embedded systems, which is the target application, this was sufficient. Um, however, if somebody wanted to, let's say, exploit the network stack in some way, and was able to glean this uh, representation of the state machine, uh, it gives you an idea where you might start your, explore, your further exploration, where you can see like, well, this is where the protocol differs from the spec or from the standard, and so maybe there's something, to, uh, something interesting there. Um, so by doing this uh, visual inspection of the learned state machine against uh, the RFC standard, uh, we found um, a couple of protocol violations. I'm not calling them bugs because um, it's to be determined if these are exploitable and could be actually bugs. It's mostly, you know, it could be just, oh, we didn't implement it because we didn't think it's important. However, it's protocol violations. So if you are thinking about some sort of you know, certification or some um, additional assurance, you probably should at least uh, conform to the, to the standard. Um, I don't think I need to go into details here. Um, you know, repeated, uh, no, I guess interesting one was uh, the small TCP wasn't resetting the state properly. Um, and yeah, so there's a couple of violations we found. Um, in terms of uh, Kani, which is the symbolic execution um, engine um, developed by Amazon, similar to our in-house tool, um, what you do here is uh, you perform model checking of the program properties through symbolic execution. And as such, it allows us to prove correctness of finer details, uh, such as packet handling, uh, serialization of the code, and so on. Uh, so again, prognosis is kind of the more high level view. I get this black box system and I do a quick inspection that ends, you know, visual inspection of how does the system behave? Does it behave as expected? And then on the kind of other side of the spectrum, I can use Kani to do some symbolic testing. Um, so the benefit of Kani is you can like, if I, well, it's not quite one-to-one -one using um, unit tests and then turning them into symbolic tests, um, but you can kind of think of it this way, right? So you start with small small proofs and then you can build them together uh, to prove, for example, as we did uh, packet parsing. So you have serialization proven that you know returns the same packet, the round trip property is correct. And um, that construction of packets is uh, is indeed correct for all possible prop, uh, values. And we are working on uh, proving that the TCP protocol behaves as it should. Uh, so it's following the, the right state transitions. Um, so to summarize, uh, so for prognosis, uh, we have five protocol violations and we are um, in discussion with the developers and uh, working on patches. Uh, you know, in a, in a way, the small TCP developers kind of uh, became victims of their own success because small TCP is hugely popular and the development team is rather small. So as a result, it takes a little bit longer than maybe it would be ideal to push patches through. Uh, but I think this is interesting, you know, useful thing to fix no matter what. Um, in terms of Kani, as I mentioned, we have the uh, around the property of TCP packets and we are working on the uh, TCP state machine verification. And the bonus is uh, this runs in the CI, C, uh, continuous verification environment. So anytime there is you know, a code change, you rerun the proofs, uh, you, you could see on the previous slide, it took about 40 minutes. And so our hope is we can perhaps either collaborate with the developers and have these proofs integrated in the upstream or have some kind of similar, you know, forked branch or some other way of basically making sure this work keeps uh, keeps being relevant. So we don't just have a proof, you know, at a point of time, but it's kind of continuously proving the, the properties of the, of the protocol. Um, now in terms of 
future work, um, we would like to apply prognosis to other protocols that are important for networking. Uh, as I mentioned, it was used for uh, showing properties of Quick, which might be actually applicable for embedded devices. There are interesting protocols too. Um, ideally, we got 100% coverage of with the symbolic execution. Uh, right now, we only look at the portion of the library that touches TCP packets. And, um, you know, we would like to at least have small TCP as a kind of the go-to network stack for SEL4 and embedded devices. Um, I believe I still have some time, so I can say a little bit about using Kani, um, which uh, you might find interesting just because it's relatively easy to start using, uh, but it has some problems in terms of, you know, developer experience. Uh, very good documentation, so it's easy to get started. Uh, unfortunately, Kani doesn't really integrate as a, another light, uh, Rust library, so you don't get the uh, Rust uh, language server-like environment. It's more like a separate compiler that analyzes your code statically. So often debugging of like, oh, I have incorrect type here, or I have some other problem takes time. You don't have immediate, you know, type hints and, and coding hints as, as you would expect. And uh, second, uh, currently you don't get a good debugging output. So if your proof comes through, it's great, and you're very happy about it. But if it doesn't, uh, the debugging log is sort of unusable, and so you end up changing things, you know, line by line, and making your test more, um, sort of less symbolic. And so as a result, this takes a little bit longer to be ideal. There are some uh, fixes in Kani in the works that uh, ideally you would get a counterexample upon a failed uh, verification run. So then you can immediately know what conditions or what input caused uh, this test to fail. Uh, I believe it should generate like a unit test with a concrete input, and then you can kind of debug it that way. Um, and there are some missing features, I believe, in terms of uh, supporting some Rust constructs. I know it can support, you know, the alloc standard, uh, you know, data types and data structures, uh, but I think there can be some improvement on ergonomics to be to be done. And also, to fix, uh, you know, if you find a bug or an error, to fix it, you really need to know your code. So it's not like, oh, Kani just tells you fix this line to this line. But you actually have to understand, you know, what is going on in the, in, let's say, protocol state machine, how the how the data are handled and such. Which, on one hand, you might say it's good because you actually have to understand your code and really review it, you know, properly. On the other hand, it's maybe more um, time consuming than uh, than you would like. So that's just like a, a word of warning, perhaps, what to what to prepare. Um, overall, we're very happy with Scanny. Um but it's not as user friendly as as you would like to see it. So maybe in the near future, thanks to the you know re uh, promised features, it will be it will be easier to use. Um, and with that, I think I'm happy to take questions. Questions? Okay. Hi, uh, really cool work, thanks. Uh, I'm wondering if this approach also scales to beyond just the kind of textbook model of TCP, so whether it's just push flags or like select, or selective acknowledgments, uh, window sizing, window scaling, if you've looked at these things and if this approach to verification might also be work for those. So are those things you mentioned part of the RFC or is it some kind of extended RFC? Uh, yeah, I mean, they're they're like, normal IETF stuff. Okay, um, I assume if, uh, so in terms of uh, prognosis, um, that would show, so like ideally with prognosis, we would show that maybe the small TCP implements similar features as Linux does. So I assume what you mentioned, uh, perhaps Linux uh, network stack would be using. Uh, so in terms of just visualizing that it's conforming to the to the standard, that's uh, doable in terms of how much uh, the county proofs can scale. Uh, 
I think it depends. Uh, but we haven't seen so far anything that would prevent us to think that like that's impossible. You might have to be creative about how you structure your proofs, and did you really narrow down uh, what you're trying to prove as a result? We had, you know, we didn't have much success with kind of broad stroke proofs, like, hey, just take a socket and show us it's doing the right thing. But kind of thinking carefully about what is the one property that I'm trying to show, uh, to, to prove in this particular case, helped us kind of structure the, the proofs um, to be faster. Um, I don't know if, that's a, if that kind of covers your question. Um, and I would say if multi CP, you know, implements those features, then of course uh, this work would be possible. But uh, we're not planning to extend any features in, in small TCB, more like you know, fix, fix, fix uh, bugs if needs to be. Any more questions? Hey. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry, this just occurred to me, but uh, you mentioned um, that small TCP has kind of a kind of a small team, and I, I think we've we've. I, I mean, Rust is Rust is popular. Networking is popular, um, so I think we've heard it mentioned a couple times today. Even, um, do you know if uh, <clears throat> if they have funding or are seeking funding or are just volunteer or what? That's a great question. Yeah, I I actually don't know. Um, it's an open source project, I would assume, or hope that somebody works on it at least part time. But where the money comes from, that's that's a great question. Yeah. Yeah. yeah interesting. Um, oh, and I should just add that uh, we'll be releasing our work, I believe, in like October, November time frame. Uh, once we go through the proper, you know, approval processes and such. So, I think I'll just append the slides on the, the summit website. So, that would be great. So I have one more question. If you go. Actually, you don't need to go back on the slides, but the, the two state machines, like mm -hmm. the the one from the RFC and the one that was learned, mm -hmm. you said they're kind of the same, but, you know, on the next slide, that one has six states. <laughs> on the previous slide, that one had 12 states. <laughs> Fair <laughs> they're enough. not the same. <laughs> That's why I was saying you squint the right way. <laughs> so the, the, the actual question is, so how, how do you squint? What, what, do you, what, what do you do for... <laughs> Uh, convincing yourself that they're at least similar enough. Is it just... You just close one eye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, that, 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 that takes care of half of the states on the other one. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, no, that, that's a good question. Um, so maybe what I wasn't um, quite uh, mentioning is uh, that for prognosis, you choose the level of abstraction you like. And so perhaps the, the alphabet that abstracting the TCP protocol wasn't sufficient to capture all these states, right? As I mentioned, we kind of have, you know, the, the SYN, SYN ACK, and then I believe a couple of more uh, messages. And so uh, perhaps if we changed or enriched this alphabet and make the abstraction more concrete, uh, then we would end up with more states of the, of the machine. Um, also to kind of keep in mind, uh, I wasn't really, I mean, ideally, we would get the same state machine, but uh, I was mostly comparing, you know, the, the reference implementation, quote unquote, reference implementation, because it's in Linux, it's you know widely used, and so on, uh, with what we seen on small TCP, and so that was kind of the main main difference, rather than comparing, you know, this picture with the you know RFC hand-drawn state machine. Right. Okay. So it was more Linux versus small TCP. Yeah, yeah, and, not and kind of the Linux is cars. closer to this than the small TCP yeah. was, but yes, to your point, it's it's definitely not you know one to one. Okay, no, that makes sense. Cool. Any more other questions in the meantime? If not, then let's thank Mikhail again. Thank you.